Hello and welcome back to The Fostered. I am your host, Angel Foster, and we have a solo. Y'all know how much I love these solos, though I really hope that you enjoyed last week's episode with Janelle. Can I just say, Janelle is the sweetest human. Like after we got off the interview, we spent like another 30 minutes just talking. She literally gave me like potential podcast people to have on the podcast and just the nicest human. Just wanted to give her a shout out. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you haven't listened to that one yet, definitely go back, check it out. It is so good. Definitely want to thrust you into your motivation for these last 90 days. Today's episode. So I just keep having interactions. I keep seeing content online. Even Janelle, I've seen her talk about this. Like, friends who are not really your friends. They are preying on your downfall. They're not really about you. And this really sparked for me because I was getting my nails done last week and my nail artist was saying, yeah, I know that you can relate to this because of the kind of people that we are. And she was speaking about a friend who wasn't reciprocating something in their relationship. And at first I started to be like, yeah, I can relate to that. But then I stopped myself and I was like, you know what? Actually, I can't relate to that because everyone in my life right now, all of my friends, I have curated in a way that they are all really supportive of me. I don't have anyone in my life right now, I feel, that is preying on my downfall. All of my friends have their own shit going on. I am extremely happy for them. I'm so supportive of them. And they're all really supportive of me and really happy and want to see me win. And I think that is what a lot of people are experiencing. They are getting in relationship with people, extending beyond friends, your relationship with your partner. Like a lot of your, of your partners don't want to see you win. I literally saw a video yesterday on TikTok of this girl who like lost all this weight on Wigovi and her husband was like shitting on her for it, like giving her so much crap. If I had a goal for myself and was genuinely happy about it, and my man didn't respond with like a crazy amount of excitement for me, we are over. <laughs> like there is no relationship. And I also just feel like that is just like a weird thing for a man to be mad about. Like it, when a woman feels more confident in her body, like the sex improves, she's walking around happier. Like everything just gets better when women feel more confident or just when anyone feels more confident in themselves. So the fact that he was kind of like, mad that she lost weight is giving feederism did y'all see that tiktok video of these this woman was talking about basically there's this like kink called feederism where men are getting women fat and there's even a version of death feederism and so when i was listening to this i was like this man might be a feeder a feeder he might be a feederist i don't know what their language is but i think another piece of this is some people really only know how to love you when you're doing worse than them. Y'all need to go re-listen to Pills and Potions by Nicki Minaj. Like she was really speaking some real tea there. If you and someone bond when you are at your lowest point and then you start coming up and they're still stuck where they are, a lot of times that is gonna breed jealousy. That is gonna breed resentment. And I have to say like, I actually used to be a jealous friend. I know a lot of us are looking at this content and thinking, like our friends are the problem. But for me, it's been like, oh, you used to kind of be that girl that was jealous of your friends. And I've, I've talked about jealousy before. Whenever I would see any of my friends doing something that I wanted to do, I would like literally like have a little anxiety attack because I would be like mad at myself, mad at them for doing the thing I wanted to do and mad that it was being well received. Like I literally had like some hater energy about me. And I really had to check myself on that. I even had some of that with my boyfriend Montez. If you go back and listen to my first episode with him, I talk about like being jealous of him. I really just used to be a jealous person. Like now that I'm really thinking about it, I used to really just be a fucking hater. And a lot of this came from me not doing any of the things I wanted to do in my own life. And I would much rather just point the fingers and be like, oh, they only have this because of this. Like with Montez, I would be like, oh, he only has this because he's a man. And it's like, that's not true. Like Montez is a very hard worker. That is why I'm attracted to him. 
attracted to him. And that's the thing too. We are, we want to be, we want to be friends and we want to be in a relationship with certain people because they have these qualities that we're attracted to. And then we get in close proximity to them. And because we're still not working on ourselves, we end up being jealous. You really have to do some deep reflection there because I really feel like like attracts like. And if you're attracting a bunch of people that are jealous of you, or you feel like don't have the best intentions for you, do you have the best intentions for them? Do you really want the best for them? Do you want the best for yourself? That could also be a part of it. Like you may be attracting certain people in your life who don't want the best for you because you also don't want the best for you. So really, that's why I feel like meditation, prayer, shadow work, like all these things are so important because that subconscious baby is so freaking strong. Like I am just like so about getting these limiting beliefs up off me. But in my early 20s, it was so hard for me to retain any friendships. Like I really don't even have that many close friends from my early 20s. And those friendship breakups are so hard. Like I feel like friendship breakups are harder than like relationship breakups sometimes because it's just so hard. Like I came across like one of my ex best friends numbers the other day and I was like, oh, like I came across one of our old text threads. And it's like, damn, we used to talk all the time. And now we don't, we don't even speak. We don't follow each other. We have each other blocked. Like it gets so intense so quickly. And I feel like with this one friend, I'll just go into it. So we became friends in college and she was like a wealthy person, like very well off. And I had never had like any wealthy like friends like that before. And so seeing someone who was able to have so much free time, have things come to them so easily, be able to buy whatever they want. The reason I got into most of my credit card debt was like trying to keep up with this friend. Like she was like, oh, just get a credit card. But she had people paying off her credit cards. I did not. <laughs> and I think I grew resentful of that. I grew resentful of how easy life was for her in this sense. She definitely had challenge, challenges in other senses, but when it came to the things that I was struggling with, she was having no problem. I ended up moving in with her. And I, every time I move in with a friend, like college roommates, it just, it always goes bad. Like that saying of like, do not move in with your friends, I think is so true because every time I've moved in with a friend, it has not, I'm not, I'm not friends with those people anymore. So yeah, take that as you will. I definitely feel like that is true for me. But yeah, we moved into each other with each other and how we did it was, even though she had the bigger room, because a part of my, a part of the apartment was used as like my office space, I ended up paying the most in rent and did not have any jobs lined up after college. I was working at Ulta and it was really hard for me to get by until I started making money from more videographer gigs. And so as I was just struggling with money, like it was just so hard for me to like keep up and I would come home and she would just be like smoking weed and just chilling or doing whatever. And I'd be so tired from work, applying for jobs. And yeah, I think I grew really jealous of her. I grew really resentful. And I think it put a huge strain on our relationship. And I also think in a similar vein, like she didn't want the best for me. Like at that time too, I was like working on my health, trying to eat healthier and lose weight. This girl was having me freaking buying cheese pizzas. We were like smoking weed. It was just like, a not, it was just not a good situation. And yeah, I mean, obviously we're not, we're not friends anymore. And I wish this person the best. And I, I don't know what they're up to, but I, I hope they're doing well. But I feel like because of how resentful I grew of her, it's not even that I was like preying on her downfall. It was just, I, I really was just genuinely jealous. I was jealous of how easy life was for her. I wish I had someone to take care of me. I was upset with upset with myself, upset with my parents and upset also that I was paying so much money in rent and like she could afford it. And I was the person paying more in rent. That's another story for another day. But yeah, it, it just became a whole messy, messy, messy situation. And I think after that, I really didn't enter friendships lightly. Like and I still don't. I am very particular about who I decide to call a friend. And I used to be so thirsty for friends. That's another thing too. I had such desperate energy around friendship. Like I would let anyone be my friend because I was just so desperate to have like company. And I just was always, I always wanted to have a big friend group. But I think in the pandemic, like really spending that time alone, getting to know myself, finding out what I like, Coming out of that, I don't feel like I had that same craving for 
having a big group of friends anymore. I really just wanted a few friends. I moved to the Bay Area, I got on Bumble, and very quickly I met some really great people. And I think there's something special about the Bay Area too where nobody's really from here like that. So everybody's kind of looking to make friends. And I feel like I just got really blessed with a really good group of girls really quickly. And all these women are doing their own shit. They're, they have ambition. They're also like funny and just cool. And we're all in relationships. So it just makes it easy. Like it's just so easy being friends. Going back to my early 20s for a bit too, because I think this is also a piece. When I got in relationship with Montez after college, I definitely also was that girl who spent all the time with my boyfriend and like kind of forgot about my friends. Like when I wasn't being friends with my roommate, I really retreated to Montez and he was really like my safeguard. Like he was my only friend (laughs) and he had lots of friends. Like Montez is very popular, but I like he was just my only friend. And I don't think your boyfriend should be your only friend. Like I definitely think you should have friends outside of your relationship. But there was definitely that period of time where he was my only friend and I'm grateful to him for being my friend. <laughs> and he would always stop me because I would just be like, oh, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to be my friend. And he like name all these people who would want to hang out. And I'm just like, no, nobody likes me. And I know there's so many girls who are like, I can't make any friends. Like making friends in your 20s are hard. And I really don't think it is that hard. Like I do think there are situations like, especially if you work from home, it can be a little bit harder to meet people. But I do feel like a lot of people are really friendly. And if you just open yourself up and have a more positive outlook and think that people want to be your friend, more often than not, you will make more friends. But every time I would tell myself like, and I still do this, I'm like, oh, they don't like me. Like that's not putting you in a situation to feel open to making friendships because you're instantly thinking like, they don't like me. And I think that's really like a really selfish way of being. Like to immediately put that on someone and be like, they don't like me. Like you don't know what they're thinking. It's so like focused, it's so self-centered to think like that instead of thinking oh what they said about this was really interesting or do you even like them you know what qualities about them but if you're instantly going they don't like me I feel like that's really small-minded it's really egotistical it's really self-centered and I think the more you can step it back like come out of that and come into a bigger picture the better experience you will have with making friends also and I saw somebody say this the other day like as we're getting into our later 20s having one good friend, two good friends, three, I think is amazing. Like we really don't need to have a million friends. Did y'all know having friends is expensive? Like now that I actually have friends and go out, it is expensive going out with these girls. And all my friends have very high paying jobs and work in tech out here in the Bay. Our wallets are not the same, babe. Like I have to stay in the house. They want to go out to brunch every week. They want to do activities. I'm like, can we be in the house? (laughs) It is not cheap having friends. They want to go on girls trips, you know? And so really think about that. Do you have the wallet for friends? Do you have the budget for a big friend group? If not, maybe that's not what you should be asking for. Just ask for one good friend. I also feel like you need different friends for different things. Like I know some people think like they want that one friend for everything. I don't really want one friend for everything. If I have one friend for everything, I guess that's my boyfriend. He is my one friend for everything. And I'm I'm also my one friend for everything. But I like to have a friend, like an entrepreneurship friend where I'm actually having my, one of my entrepreneurship friends on the podcast we're recording next week, Gabby. She has a purse. She has a handbag line. I'm so excited to interview her. Like that is my entrepreneurship friend and we go play tennis. Then it's nice to have a friend that you can tell like your relationship gossip to, like you can tell all your relationship stuff to, and it's not, inter- you know, it's not going to be like entertainment for that person. I really don't like telling my relationship business to everybody because I don't know. I just feel like people really take a lot of your trauma, the deep things that you're dealing with and think like it's just like a joke or it's um, it's just entertainment. And I I don't, I'm very particular about who I open up to around things like that. Like look at who you're telling yourself, who you're telling things to. Is this person going to give you advice from a place of they've already experienced it or you know that they will have good insights or are they just a good listening ear? 
I think that is a good way to term- determine to like where to place certain friends because I definitely can be this friend of like, <laughs> like, oh, leave him. Like I can be a, a leave him friend and I'm like cozied up in my relationship. Like if you don't want like leave him advice, like don't come to me because I am very much pro- like pro leaving him, but I'm also like in a relationship, you know? Just saying that to say, just be very particular about who you share your things with. Evaluate the source when they give you the advice. If you're in that phase of trying to make friends, figuring out what kind of friends you want to have in your life, I am a big believer of having friends that you look up to. Some They have some qualities that you really admire. I think that is so important because I feel like that quote is so true. You are the average of the five people you spend your, the most time with. But also if you're a person that is on the come up, you're working on yourself, you're hard working on your goals and you have friends that are not into that. Like say you're trying to get really consistent with working out. You don't want all your friends to be people that don't work out because they're going to be shitting on you for working out, influencing you not to work out. They're not going to go to workout classes with you, you know? So you, I mean, maybe they will, but you don't want to have to drag someone to something that you're already dragging yourself to. Like, I think if you're trying to work out, Surround yourself with people who are already doing that. If you're trying to, if you're trying to build a business, surround yourself with other people doing similar things. Like I said, like attracts like. Even though you may not be where these people necessarily are, I think getting yourself in the vicinity of them can help you elevate to where you want to be. And I don't think it has to be so transactional, like, oh, I'm only going to be friends with people who make this amount or, you know, whatever it is, whatever your goals are. Because I think the best friendships I've had have been ones where you're also offering something to them. Like they may have this, but you have another skill. I'm not going to lie. One of my favorite ways now to make friends is to have people on this dang podcast because I'm like, expect like I, I love meeting other content creators, like having Janelle on. It's free promotion for them. And it also introduces them to my network. I get to gain so much valuable insight from them, you know? So think about what things you can also offer another person. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, I don't have anything that I can offer. You do. Look at your skills. Look at their skills. Figure out what you can do that they can't do. Like there has to be something that you're interested in that they may not necessarily be interested in. And maybe it's not something that you can offer them. Maybe it's like a list of book recommendations. Maybe it's some new shows to watch. Like it doesn't have to be so black and white. Stay open, stay curious. And this is also why exposing yourself to multiple things makes you a more interesting person and makes you a more interesting friend. I've been loving tennis. Tennis is also a great way to meet people. The tennis girlies, the tennis community, I am obsessed with the friendliest people. They're friendly, but they're also like, I'll kick your ass in tennis, but they're super friendly and they just want to play all the time. I'm obsessed with tennis people, but just find some hobbies that can make you a more interesting person so when you meet people you have something to offer because i'm not because yeah if you are just spending all your time like scrolling social media watching tv like maybe you won't feel like you have anything to offer though i do feel like if you meet someone who is also wanting to maybe get into content creation like you if you're spending all your time on social media you should have a lot of valuable insights to add but i think a lot of this work starts with really just being a friend to yourself Take yourself on solo dates, do things alone. Because one, if you go out alone, like maybe you might meet a friend out, maybe you won't, but it gets you in that practice of learning how to be a friend. Like if you can't even be a friend to yourself, you'll definitely not be a good friend to anyone else. Because being a friend is a lot of work. Like that's actually what I didn't realize. It's a lot of communication, following up, checking in on one another. Like it takes a lot of work to be a good friend. And that's really why I'm like, I don't want a lot of friends because it's it's too exhausting. I don't have enough time in the day to have a bunch of friends. And if you are like me, feeling jealous of your friends, really check that. Really, really check that. There is something there that you want to be doing and you need to work on that and remove yourself from the friendship until you heal because you're not ready to be in a friendship. Quite frankly, you're not. And that was what I really had to tell myself. Like, you know what? I'm actually not in a position to be anyone's friend right now because I have a lot of healing that I need to do. Like I was so insecure. I didn't love myself. And like Mama Ru says, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? So really work on that. 
And I would say that is the work really to do before you even jump in to try to make some friends. Like I really wish more people would just spend some time working on themselves before they're trying to jump into friendships because I really don't think they're ready. And I think that is what, what leads to so many friendship breakups because really we don't know how to be friends to one another. You really, we really don't. I mean, I do now, but a lot of y'all don't. <laughs> All right, well, that is it for this solo. I, I did wanna give a quick little book recommendation. I am reading Be Your Future Self Now. Fully obsessed with this book. This is my October read and I'm really, really enjoying it. Next week, we have Ariel Astoria on. I am so excited for you guys to listen to this episode. It just felt like she was really pouring into me. Like, you know how you like are in church and your heart starts to get warm? Like that is how I was feeling listening to Ariel talk. So, so excited for you guys to hear this episode. And again, if you didn't listen to last week's, go back. It is so, so good. Thank you so much for being here with me. I am so grateful for you and your time. Before you click away, be sure to subscribe, like, follow the pod. It all means so, so much. I appreciate your time here week over week. I hope you appreciate that your girl is getting consistent finally. I'm recording this late at night. I'm like, I do not want to break my streak. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I am rooting for you. You got this. Talk soon.